you are going now. Okay, well, what if I don't? Sheriff, you need to back up out of my face, sir. You have no authority. That, you're not gonna you fucking tell me what to do, motherfucker. You you're not gonna get in my sheriff's hey, face. You want to do that? Just like you told me. Motherfucker, get your hands off me, man. Yeah, he ain't gonna say anything if it's warm. If what? He said he ain't gonna say anything if he's sitting there in the back seat and it's warm. Oh. So he can sit over there and be cold. Imagine risking your career to fight the system you swore to uphold. So in this video, let's meet the three corrupt cops who are put in the place they belong by the good cops who stood up against them, even when it meant standing alone. On January 13th, 2021, someone called the Bossier City Police Department. The caller described it like, he almost hit a mailbox a couple of miles back, and then he kept crossing into the opposite lane like five or six times over the median. Soon after, two supervisors from the police department found the driver and went to chat with him in a grocery store parking lot. I was a driver. Driving fine, it goes a little bit to the right. Other than that, if, unless I drop something or whatever, or hit the curb or whatever, or hit the line, but I, you was all around the car if you like. The only thing I know of, I saw the phone down in the seat and was reaching forward to get it. Got a gap right there. So you got off, five, I don't know. You got off at 6 o'clock today? I did. I got two kids. Did you, uh, did you go straight to bed or did you go to school? No, I didn't. So you've been up since last night? I have. They identified him as Travis Cooker, who, interestingly, was off duty at the moment. One of the supervisors decided to inspect Coker's car. In doing so, they stumbled upon something that piqued their interest and raised suspicions. What is it? Yeah. Uh, extra tram? Or what Yeah. Yeah. It's a cause. They cause the business. Are you taking a couple of these? No, not today. No. Not a one. That's Frank Bally. He gave that to me. <coughs> so you think you're good to go for driving? Oh, oh, 100%. And, and, and look. Cooker said he was perfectly fine and hadn't taken any medication that day. However, when the supervisor returned and suggested a straightforward test to verify it, Coker seemed hesitant, hinting that he might have something to hide. If I hit something, it was dropping my phone. Okay. It ain't the slip. Well, listen to me. You're going to have to go this route, what I just told you. Okay. I, I'm telling you, I can't do that right now. You don't have no choice. I'm telling you that right now. Okay. With all due respect, when I get off, I have obligations to find. That's why I couldn't go tonight to begin with. But I'm, I'm making it work. But I, I have to get back home to get me. Hey. We're not going to have this discussion. You're going to WK. You're going now. Officer Cooker seemed focused on avoiding the drug test, even though the supervisor asked him several times to comply. Despite the supervisor's repeated requests, Cooker stood his ground and refused to cooperate. Captain, I can't go right here. You're this going thing. now. Okay, well, what if I don't? We're we gonna have a problem. Well, what's the problem? You we probably need to administer administrative, administrative leave. Well, what? Well, because I can't go right this thing because I'm on my off time? Listen to me. You're operating. I wasn't even, I wasn't even driving. Coker, Coker, Coker. Uh, Captain, I love you to death. But, I mean, I, but you put me no, in a bad. You put me in a bad spot. I, Captain, I'm in the only spot I can be in, man. I'm trying to take care of my family. You, you're going to have to go with him, okay? I can't go there right now, Captain. He assured them that he would head back home and then return to the department. Despite his assurances, the officers weren't particularly pleased with his conduct. Listen, listen, I'm not. If you was in your POV, and listen, 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 I would be. Listen, listen, in this shop. If you was in your POV, we wouldn't be out here right now. I know that. But you and the city 
vehicle. Right. And, okay. and it's her word again. She don't. Did she got some videotape? Uh, listen to me. This, this is you not a court. I mean? This is an administrative deal. I know that, but I'm just saying. Anybody's out there. The police. Like I said, if I drop my phone and run over the line, I'm not not doubting that. Yes, but I have I have to get to. I get, give me 35 minutes. I'll come back. They can't do that. Can't do that. Okay. Well, can I get somebody to come get me? No, no, you gotta you gotta come with us. If you How, if, if I cannot listen, come listen, with listen. you, if you refuse, we're not gonna have no choice but to put you on the street. Hey, what does that mean? That means that we have to take your gun, take your badge, Jesus and then we gotta Christ. go through the chief's office. That's and then the chief. Even after the supervisors warned him that they might have to put him on leave if he didn't cooperate, Cooker stayed firm in his decision to head back home, refusing to cooperate despite the consequences looming over him. So now. Are you going to take the test, or are you not going to take the test? I, can't, I will take the test today, I just can't take it right this second. So, here's the deal to make it perfectly clear, what he's explaining to you yes, sir. And I'm is on your that team. he and the captain are giving you an order, no, being I in patrol understand. administration, okay, you're under their yes, command, that I you have that. to submit I, I to, to, to reasonable suspicion testing there, there is, for, what, for the What department. is the reasonable suspicion? Listen, it, it's not but, for the hey, Listen to I'm me. just saying, explain to me Coker, the reasonable suspicion. you're arguing. Look, I'm not. I'm, I'm asking. Okay, Sergeant, they, don't, don't worry about it. He's, he's been policing long enough. Right, just got to detect this. If you don't understand what we're saying right now, you're not gonna never understand what we're saying. Okay, so we just leave it right there. Don't, don't, I'm not worried. I'm just about asking. So that's all. When one of the supervisors got there, he was really surprised. He just couldn't believe how clueless Cooker was acting. Just, oh, just, I'm on the phone with one of the chief. So you gotta go for reasonable suspicion that something. You gotta go. I can't go right this second. Can you give me 30 minutes? And no, I'll, we're gonna make we're gonna make sure whatever 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 design, whatever your family needs are, we will make sure those family needs are taken care of. I have to, there is I have to take care of. I have my mother died two weeks ago. I have a daddy that I I didn't ask for this. It's because I didn't go to sleep. Captain, I'm not trying to make your job hard. None of y'all's job hard. Y'all know me. You're doing a good job making it hard, bro. I mean, I'm not, man. You're making mine hard because I got nothing said I had to go home and go to sleep. Yeah, am I going to go to sleep? Yeah. But I had to think that's the night thing I told you. I'm doing the, I'm juggling it the best I can. The, be, the be, very best I can. I, I, I go to work every night. I'm there at 10 o'clock. Are you going to submit to the testing or not? I will go to any test y'all want me to go to. Just give me just a little bit of time. Can't do that. It became so evident that Officer Cooker was not being truthful, and he was essentially messing up with the details. He was just not ready to listen to his superiors as he constantly argued with them. He continued with this behavior for the next few minutes. Okay, yeah, here we are. And, 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 you said you got family that you I do, I got family. I'm on my you. off day. Yeah, I understand that. But you in our car. Bro, I am in your car, right. which I was not driving when y'all pulled up. But you... Okay. But it's, but it's somebody that don't like the police, Captain. I ain't, Man. is there something wrong with the wrong with the it, it, it doesn't matter. Oh, it it does matter. It doesn't. This is not well, a DWI. Let's do it. Well, I know it's not. I ain't drinking drop. You know you're not getting back in the car to drive. That's fine. I'm going to get my stuff out of it. Like when? Right now. It's my stuff. I can believe I can get it. It's my personal stuff. Okay. Yeah. You, you'll be able to get it, but you're not getting it right now. Well, I got to get my personal stuff. You take a, a chance of being terminated. I'm not saying over, that's gonna happen. But over what, Captain? Because right now, the way you're acting, we're trying to do our Captain, job. Not, we're I'm trying to do something. So you, you, to, you are, are being respectful. Gone? I'm being as respectful okay. as I can be. Are you going? Yes or no? Captain, I have an obligation at home. Or, or, I'm off. I'm not going right now. It's a yes or no answer. I'm not going right now. Okay. Can I up on me just a little bit. Okay, I guarantee you we can look around and everybody's broke policy. Okay. They got body cameras on? No. That's, that's against policy. As the situation continued to worsen, and the supervisor remained firm without giving him any leeway, Mr. Coker began to grow confrontational. Going in the vehicle. Listen, you don't want to stand, Coker. I got the keys to the car. I need that money. Yeah, you get, yeah. Can, we, can we I get, get my you, money? You're going to get your money. money. Nobody's trying to keep your money from you. Nobody's going to keep your money. Well, why can't I get it now? Step to, step to the front of the car. You can get in front of the car. Stand in front of the car. Oh, now I'm in trouble now. No. Well, what, I need to stand in front of the damn vehicle. Because I said so, that's why. Well, who are you to say so? I, 
we ain't, you ain't no right to me today. At this point, I don't trust you, man. I don't care if you trust me or not. I don't want you near me. That's fine. I don't want you near me. How about that? I'm not under arrest. Okay, fine. Can right. you grab my bucket of dips and knock that under the seat? Maybe he had been drinking or taking drugs, and that's why the task seemed impossible or dangerous to him. Y'all ain't gotta do that. I ain't mad at none of y'all. Y'all treat me like shit. I ain't mad at none of y'all. Nobody treat you like anything, Cole, but we, we, we had a complaint. We gotta see through it. But you're hindering us from doing what we gotta do. No, I'm not. What I, man, my family comes first, man. Y'all really think that I'm gonna do it? Come on, man. I've got none of my prescriptions out of the car that I have to take today, Will. It's right now. They've given what you... What are they? They've given what you... What are they? I'm not going to argue. You can take it up with Captain Gary. What are they? What you are can they? take it up with Sergeant Matt. What are the issues? I've told you. They've given you a direct order. A direct you order have to comply what? to go submit to chemical testing. Why? Uh, under what grounds? They don't have to have grounds. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They, yes, they do. No, they don't. Did I get pulled for a random... It doesn't matter. Sorry, then take sorry, it up no, with no, your no, attorney no, and no, civil no, service. No, I suggest no, you we'll see what it said. I've already read it. I know what it said. However, the officers did settle with Officer Cooker, as he was allowed to call someone to pick him up and eventually leave the area. Despite this, the heated altercation between the officers showed no signs of stopping. Get to the point where let's not get to escalated. It, it, it don't have to get escalated because thing is you're OJ here. Okay. okay? And, and you might have the car, but you don't have me. Okay, I understand. Okay, and, and I'm just gonna cut and drive it. That's, that's okay. Good. I can where I want to. Okay. I, I think I'm well, good. Let me tell you something. Okay, go ahead and tell me. Don't get too close. That's what I'm Then back you. up on me. I'm right here. Okay. I'm actually gonna stand right there. I, I, okay. I, don't I, stand right there. I'm just saying, I don't want this thing to escalate. How is it going to escalate? You well, tell me. Well, I'm telling you, I don't want you to get too close to over here. Let my captain do what he got to do. Okay. That's well, what I'm asking. You tell me how it's going to escalate. I'm hoping it don't escalate. Well, what would it escalate into? I don't, I don't know. I'm just telling okay. you. I don't, I don't want, know I don't, that it's going to escalate because I'm standing on the curb. I don't want it to escalate. Yeah. Me, okay. I know you don't. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I know you, you don't. stand right there. Don't get close to me. Then you don't get close to I'm me. Not. I'm on my head. I'm good. I'm good, too. Cool. I just want my we fucking on, we shit on the same out of my page. We on the same page. Yeah. No, I don't right, think cool. we are. Yeah, we are. I don't think so. Yeah. Because you have to step closer. And I'm glad you're right where you're at. Yeah, yeah I'm right where I'm at. You step closer to me. Yeah, I know. Because I'm good. Because I don't want it to ask me. Me neither. Cool. That's what I'm saying. We're on the same page. Yeah. The officers just wanted him to take a quick test. Something any cop should do without a fuss. It's hard to believe why a police officer wouldn't follow orders for such a simple thing. Best fucking boys, young guy, in this fucking city. I understand. If, if, if you would just stop for one second and just think, this whole time, while we sit up here going through all everything that we've gone through, you not want to go. It's not not wanting to go. Can, can I, can I can go I, to space where you want me to? I, I, you I, know I, that. I'm finished. Man, we, 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 we I just want to tell y'all, every one of y'all. That I have no hard feelings towards anybody. I don't know what was said that I swerved. If I dropped my phone and swerved over to the side, I'm sorry. I, 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 I forgive you, man. I, I really am. I, I don't want any. I, I've worked with every one of y'all, especially you. And I, don't, I don't want any. There, and, and I have no issue with you. Right. I don't. But I have. You a doing job. your job? I yes, know. I, I, have, get I, have, that. I have a job to do, and, and, I, and, and I everything, and all the sequence of events that have taken place today. Lord knows I hate it. Just then, Coker's ride arrived and he left. Coker did not even apologize after displaying this behavior was unsettling. If he talks to his superiors this way, how does he treat everyday citizens? Hey, uh, um, when you get to the station? Uh, yeah, go ahead, tell me. I already talked to something. Okay, yeah. Come on. Yeah. As soon as I get there, I'm gonna dump this on the cradle. I may leave it because I won't come in until the morning anyway, so I'll just leave my body cam on there. Okay. The police put him on a leave of absence while they investigated what happened. A few weeks later, the investigation wrapped up. It found that Cooker had violated department policies. As a result, he was fired from his job as a police officer. You're not prepared for the next case you'll encounter. 
Hit that like button before we continue. On January 30th, 2024, a Lexington police officer was on patrol when he spotted a car zooming past him, way at 85 miles per hour on a 55 miles per hour zone. After a short pursuit, he managed to pull the car over. He was completely surprised by what he saw next. Okay, so this podium, could you do an E5 and a 55? I was going. Going where? Come on, where? Come on, right over here. I didn't know we had one. We have an armed guy barricaded in the house. Just be a police officer. Where at? Right down here on. Here in Lexington? Yeah. We have an armed person, but we don't know about it. The officer who pulled over the speeding car was surprised to see Sheriff Chris Amason from Cleveland County behind the wheel. He was rushing to a SWAT situation, but the Lexington police didn't know about it. To figure things out, the officer who pulled him over went to talk to the police chief. Oh, all right, I'll call my chief and let him know. 301 next. According to the Cleveland County Sheriff, we have a posse situation at that location. Not long after, Lexington's police chief, Ronnie Johnson, showed up. He was super mad. Someone messed up by not telling him what happened. There's Captain Tom. Captain Hawk. Yeah. Where's the Excuse me, sir. What's going on here? We've realized that I'd like to know what's going on in my own damn city. We would have notified you, sir. We would have? Yeah. Well, hold on. I've been at the city. I've been down there with the PD the whole fucking day. To the call, yep. it says Lexington was notified they refused to respond before the phone call. Okay, I don't know who the fuck said that. First of all, sir, I know you're the chief. Of that. I'm just telling you the call shit. I don't appreciate all of this going on and nobody notifying me a damn thing about it. Deputy Monsky, wanting to calm things down, tried to jump in, but the other officers weren't happy about it. They got annoyed and turned on Monsky. Sir! I am too. You're not going to talk about chief like that, sir. That's not going to happen. You can get the fuck out of my face. I don't give a fuck who you are. Okay? This is my county, too. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. No, you don't. This is going to be good. According okay. to the call, you need to stop. Chill out. Back up. Everything's going to be okay. But you need to back up. I get it. That you can back up. Negative. Instead of working together with his fellow officers, he started arguing with them. This yelling and arguing only made the already tense situation even worse. This right here ain't We're not going to be distracted. Okay. Sheriff, you need to back up out of my face, sir. You have no authority. That, you're not going to fucking tell me what to do, motherfucker. You do you're not going to get in my sheriff's hey, face. You want to do that? Just like you told me. Motherfucker. Get your hands off me, man. Back up, John. Hey, hey, right pull, him, pull him back. No, he He's in the sheriff's face. face. He's getting ready to go to jail. Stop. He's getting ready to go to jail. Stop. Both of you need to back off. This is our operation for something right now. You understand? Oh, yeah. Perfectly fucking clear. Perfectly clear. Come on. Just to run that fucking way. I want that lieutenant's name. So I can put his hands on me. After things got heated, Chief Johnson and the officer left the scene. They thought the sheriff's department should handle it. Chief Johnson wasn't shy about his frustration. He appeared on the local news, accusing the sheriff's department of shutting them out again. The sheriff's department felt bad about what happened and tried to explain what their officers did. You are now about to witness an outrageous and shocking case that will blow your mind. On January 2nd, 2018, Officer Dickerson was on patrol in Roswell, Georgia. She spotted a golf cart zipping down Highway 9. Officer Dickerson pulled over the cart to investigate who was driving, and she found out that a young man was driving the cart. You're driving around in your mom's vehicle? Yeah, I asked her if I could borrow it. She works at the uh, Roswell. At the Roswell what? Up there. So yeah, I asked her if I could borrow it for a few minutes. And she said, yeah, just be safe. And... Okay, you understand that you cannot drive a golf cart down the road, the oh, roadway. I really didn't understand that. So how how old are you? Um, You're 13? Is that wrong? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Like a car could slam into the back of you not realizing you're... Well, hold on. 
What, do you have ID on you or anything like that? What are you doing out here at 13 years old? I'm going to Starbucks. You're going to Starbucks? Yeah. Where does your mom work? She works up at Roswell. At Roswell, Roswell what? Like down there in Roswell. Where does she work? What's the name of the business? The apartments. The Roswell apartments. Like, okay. Officer Dickerson tells the young man to get out of the golf cart. She searches him and puts him in the back of her police car. She spends time asking him where he got the golf cart and trying to find his mom, but the teen keeps changing his story. Finally, Sergeant Daniel Elsey shows up and decides to use some methods that might not be right. He's seatbelted in. Hey, man. Hey, what are you fucking asking for? Oh. Another thing. Another thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <sighs> Sergeant Elze hops into Officer Dickerson's patrol car and switches off the heater before rolling down the windows. Meanwhile, a teen remains handcuffed in the back seat. It was noted that the temperature in Roswell ranged from 12 to 18 degrees on the night of this incident. Officer Dixon, you can come in my uh, Okay. Yeah, he ain't gonna say anything if it's warm. If what? He said he ain't gonna say anything if he's sitting there in the back seat and it's warm. Oh. So he can sit over there and be cold. Warm. <sighs> okay. That's why I rolled your windows down. Oh. And a few minutes to think about it. should I call an 85 for the golf cart? Yeah. Okay. Let him get a little chill. Maybe that'll oh. Alright, partner, what's your name? I'm sorry. Getting cold yet, Anthony? You can take it. Cool. So can I. Because I've got heat in this car. So here's where we're at. Let's see with the Roswell Police Department. Look at me when I'm speaking to you. My name is Sergeant Elsie with the Roswell Police Department. Okay? You can't be driving a golf cart in the streets. You understand that, right? I'm pretty sure that's not your golf cart. Is that fair to assume? Where did you get the golf cart from? So what school? Yeah, I can see your breath. It's pretty cold back there. Keep telling me. Speaking of, what's mom's name? You don't know mom's phone number. All right, well I'll tell you what. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive to this address you gave me. You live in Alpha. To this address, you gotta hang tight right here, since you can't remember mom's phone number. And if I can make fun contact with mom, then we'll get some heat going. All right. You hang tight. He's freezing him out. He's about to drive to the address that he gave in a bomb turn and he don't in the car. It's chilly, oh, chilly. Three signal, 18 for a wrong way driver. Aw, oh, man. Oh. Is it cold in the car, you're asking? Yeah, it's freezing in there. Well, he's got all the windows rolled down and the heat off. The Eighth Amendment of the Constitution prohibits cruel and unusual punishment in the United States. This refers to punishment that causes unacceptable suffering, pain, or humiliation. This young man was left shivering in a patrol car until Sergeant Greg Fryson intervened, telling Sergeant Elsie that his actions weren't acceptable. Afterward, Elsie returned to the patrol car, rolled up the windows, and turned on the heater. The teen finally told the cops where he lived, so they took him back home to his mom. They also towed the golf cart, but couldn't find its owner. A leaked memo showed concerns about Sergeant Elsie's behavior, but he never got punished, even though his supervisor saw the body cam footage right after it happened. When the 11 Alive news team asked for the footage seven months later, only then did the Roswell police start looking into it. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations didn't want to take the case, so they suggested the Fulton County District Attorney handle it. Now, Sergeant Elsie is on leave while they investigate. YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best. Watch and find out if it's right.